Sure. So I'm Erin Rhodes Weidner. Um, I oversee global business development for media, entertainment, and technology at Verizon. And my name is Jeff Budney. I'm a manager in the network planning department at Verizon, responsible for peering and caching for Verizon's internet networks globally. Uh, also a board member of the Streaming Video Alliance. And uh, Brad and everybody at the VSF want to say thank you first off for, for having us here to talk. So we're going to be talking a little bit about open caching today. Um, and uh, so let me just move to the next slide so we can kind of talk through it. Um, Jeff, do you want to kind of talk us through what exactly open caching is? Uh, yeah, so let's let's jump right into it. Um, hope everybody finds this as exciting as we do. Um, but it simply stated, open caching is an extension of existing methods to deliver internet content uh, that allows servers at the last mile of an ISP network to be used for delivery. So if you look at this diagram, essentially uh, on the right is your sort of traditional sources of internet streaming content, um, whether it's coming from a, a CDN uh, that is simply feeding into a, a transit provider on the internet or a CDN that has a direct connectivity into ISP networks. That's your, your typical source of stream content today. What open caching does is it has a series of specifications and APIs in place uh, so that a server you can see now on the left into basically the last mile of the ISP network can be delegated content by those existing methods so that an end user, uh, whether it be uh, wireless or wired broadband access or mobile on the left, when they go and reach out for, their con for that content from their favorite provider, they're gonna be redirected to that open cache that's sitting within, uh, within the ISP's network. How did open caching come about? So uh, Verizon's interest started uh, with a desire to make our network more efficient. Uh, you know, everybody has heard estimates today, you know, 70, 80% of your network's traffic is video. So how can we more efficiently bring that to our end users? Uh, so we, yeah. we started off with that pursuit um, and that got us involved with a group called uh, the Streaming Video Alliance. I mentioned that now I sit on the board of that organization. Um, right. And what the SVA is, is a global association that enables companies across the video ecosystem to work together to solve that critical challenge of how do you deliver high quality streaming video at scale? And the SVA is a, a, a mix of ISPs, CDNs, content owners, and more. So really the full, you know, full cross-section, full ecosystem uh, of the streaming industry that again, come together, let's solve that challenge and find better ways to stream video. Uh, open caching is the subject of one of the working groups of the SVA. And in order to put this in place, we really have a lot, you know, a lot to be thankful for, for the work that the SVA has done and all those members. Um, the work that they do is publicly available online, uh, starting with uh, what was called the open caching functional requirement. That was the first document they published. And then something called the request routing functional specification. And those were really the groundwork of how do you take that, that server that's sitting in the ISP network and then provide those capabilities to existing CDNs? That was the original work that's since been extended uh, into other areas, uh, things such as uh, logging, content management, performance, and so forth. And what was the problem? You mentioned you, know, you were trying to solve something with open caching. So what was it exactly that you were trying to solve? What were you trying to make better? Uh, so the you know the the challenge for Verizon and I think a lot of ISPs and even you know the CDNs is how do you get this you know large volume of traffic through the internet through a carrier's network to those end users. Um, so you're you're solving an infrastructure problem. You're also solving a quality of experience uh, challenge for your end users. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and so right now let's kind of go over again, like where, where is the content being stored versus where it typically is stored? And I think, you know, maybe this diagram also helps with that yeah. as well. Yeah, and that, that's really the, the, you know, the heart of the benefit of, of open caching. So uh, typically your, your content is going to be stored on those CDNs or on origin 
uh, that's over on the right of our diagram, you know, higher latency yeah. away from your end users. Uh, what open caching allows you to do is store that, you know, popular content or um, the high demand content closer to the end user. So it's going to have a, once it, it is served up, it's going to have a shorter distance to travel through the network um, <clears throat> in order to get to those end users. And the result of that is going to be a lower potential for uh, network events, you know, that could cause freezing or, or buffering or other things that would, you know, interrupt your entertainment. Like things that would normally happen with like the regular workflow. Right. So you're, you're really, you're cutting out a large part of both the ISPs network and the internet. Yep. So you're avoiding any internet bottlenecks um, or, you know, spurious traffic that could get in the way of, of your quality streaming. Yeah. And have you been, and I know we've been doing trials on this for a little bit of time. Um, can you kind of talk about what you actually saw when we did this, actually, when we actually did this, as opposed to just talking about it in theory? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've had this technology in our network for a number of years. This is, it's something that ISPs have been doing, um, you know, to manage traffic uh, for a long time. But what the, the SVA specifications really allowed was, uh, you know, to, to do a more deterministic approach to caching, right? Make that delegation agreement with the content provider. Um, so we did a lot of work last year with another SVA member with Disney uh, yeah. for streaming Disney Plus. Um, and, and we've done that at scale on our network uh, to our whole, fi whole population of uh, Fios fiber to the home users. Mm -hmm. And the, the feedback that we got was that it, it works really well, you know, and that I think that's about the best thing you can say, right? Right. Um, you know, it, it, it compares very well to other CDNs. I mean, works better, in fact. Um, and the, you know, the users don't really notice any difference, right? It, it's something that we're doing on our side for efficiency and for uh, the benefit of the content provider. Well, I think probably the users do notice the difference, right? Where... <laughs> Well, yeah, they better. don't know what yeah. we're, right. They don't know why it's happening. They just yeah, they don't know, know why it's happening, but they're right? like, "Oh, this is great." <laughs> yeah, uh, right. You know, so we, we did that with Disney, and we've had similar success. Um, you know, with with other streaming sources, you know, live events, download type content. You know, all of them see the same benefits. Um, you know, end user quality of experience, and then efficiency for the ISP and for the the content provider. Can you talk a little bit about the live content bit of it? Because I mean, I think you know we can understand the the streaming aspect, but with mm -hmm. live, how does it work? Uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, live is going to work very similar to a, a video on demand flow in terms of how the cache gets involved. Um, yep. But then the, the cache at that point is serving as you know more of a proxy as opposed to a storage device, right? So mm -hmm. if you have you know a, a, a thousand. Uh, users on your network that are watching the same stream, uh, they can be going to the same cache, and then that cache is pulling in one feed uh, from the CDN on the right or from the origin source. Um, so again, you have that efficiency. Um, you have less, you know, uh, internet choke points in the way of getting to that content for the end user. Yeah, yeah. And so you had mentioned. Um, that we uh, did the, these tasks with the FIOS. Mm -hmm. um, and where are we at with kind of deploying open caching ourselves? Uh, so we've been making a lot of progress on, on our deployment, even since we've, uh, since we've discussed this publicly last. Okay. Um, the, uh, as I mentioned, we had uh, our Fios network was completely covered with, uh, with the open caching technology. So any, any user on the Fios network could be addressed by one of these caches. And we have, uh, also in play, uh, Verizon Wireless. So we've been doing testing and trialing on the Verizon Wireless network um, with some of the same content providers that we've done uh, on Fios. And to, to give kind of a sense of like, you know, what, what's the scale of this, right? Uh, on the Fios side, it's, uh, it's over 300 uh, central offices. These are the last mile locations uh, on the wireline network. So over 300 central office locations where we have the caches that gives us that full coverage of that, uh, of that user base. Um, and what we're in the process of deploying on the wireless side is, is 51 of those wireless aggregation points where we can then uh, do the same thing, deliver open caching to those users. And if you, know, if you look at Verizon overall, right, that gives us full coverage of those, of those consumers. 
uh, you're talking about around 150 million users, right, between Fios and then that sure. large, uh, large population of wireless users and the growing population of uh, fixed wireless broadband, 5G. Um, we've been calling it 5G Ultra at Verizon. We've done a lot of, a lot of promotion of that yeah. recently. Um, right. But, you know, for us, one of those things where, again, we see, you know, efficiency for the network um, and that performance for the end user. Um, and you kind of touched on this, but also, you know, you were saying about mobile users because they're in the SAP sites, but, um, you know, we've also been deploying 5G at home, right? So that would also affect those users as well. Yeah, and I, I, I think it's something that, you know, we're showing that focus, right? We're going out there and trying to make sure that we can make it work as good as possible uh, for yeah. those fixed wireless users. Um, you know, really that... I look at them as the same as, uh, you know, as a Fios consumer at that point. Yeah. If you look at the types of bandwidths that we can, we can provide to those home users, um, they're going to be those high consumer, you know, high, uh, high consumers of streaming content, um, you know, sitting, sitting on the couch, uh, you know, Friday night and the weekends and, and binge watching. Uh, right. It's not something that you see as much with a mobile user, right? So that, that's really yeah. where the traffic gets, gets driven from, and that's where this need for, uh, an open cache comes into play uh, because you can you know, you can take that traffic to the edge and take it as close as possible to the end user. Absolutely. Uh, now, one thing uh, one thing that I've been wondering, Aaron Rose. I mean, you have a lot of uh, you know a lot of exposure to the media media and entertainment industry. Uh, you know, how do, how do you see open caching affecting content providers? What's what's your perspective? Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. We were, um, I just went to the HPA tech retreat um, last week and it was really fun to be around, you know, back in person, um, you know, as, as we were kind of talking about earlier, as Brian was kind of mentioning, but, um, but, you know, one of the exercises that we did, and I think in one of the panels, which I thought was really interesting was like, how many uh, streaming services do you have? You know, and so everybody would raise their hand at one, two, three, four, you know, and like, I don't know how many you have, but I probably have at least six, seven different streaming services. So, and there's just such just a tremendous amount of content that's currently being created, right? People are just mm -hmm. investing so much money in content and content is king. So I think, uh, you know, people are looking to differentiate themselves. So if I'm ever using a streaming service that kind of is jittery or isn't delivering my content or I'm having problems with it, I'm absolutely going to switch. Uh -huh. and I'm absolutely going to go to some other streaming provider that has more content um, that's easier to access. Uh -huh. So I think this is what is really interesting about open caching is kind of making a different user experience, driving home like a different user experience and really being at the forefront of how is the user experiencing content and how do you retain that? Because it's not just about content anymore, it's also about experience. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, as we kind of see drop-offs of streaming services or consolidations, that's gonna be a really big point. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I think uh, in our home, we've got all the streaming services that we'll call yeah. it business research. Um, yeah. But, you know, we, we have everything available and you do see that sometimes, <laughs> right? You go, you go to one, and, yeah. and you're going to wait. You get the spinny wheel. Uh, you're probably going to stop. And as a as a consumer, you don't have this view like we have on the screen. You know everything that's that's in that workflow, and even you know even beyond what we're showing here, right? Just the the acquisition workflow for for any type of video. Uh, right. You know you're you're not aware of that, but you just know if I go and click the button, is it going to work or not? Um, right. So this is really a way, like it's a collaborative way, um, you know, that the content owners and the ISP can work together. And yeah. you know, provide that better experience and that greater efficiency. Totally, totally. Um, okay, so I think one other question that I had um, before we kind of open it up for Q and A is, um, what makes open caching different than CDN? Um, yeah, so really, it's you know, it's the same and it's different, right? So one of the things that we've done is. Uh, we've integrated this with the existing standards, so that's part of the uh, part of the open caching working working group's efforts has been to uh, go to the IETF, uh, work within CDNI, uh, which yeah. is uh, one of the standards groups that sets RFCs related to CDNs, 
uh, and, and actually publish extensions there so that the open cache can be considered an extension of the existing CDNs. You know, so really it's, it's doing the same thing. It's just doing it in a different place. Um, and the, you know, the efficiency uh, comes from that location um, and you know, creates a, a very useful dynamic. I think one of the other questions uh, we had touched on was live events, right? And, and that always drives a challenging use case for, uh, you know, for content providers uh, especially if you're talking about, you know, a big game or some other, uh, you know, some other like really large streaming event. Typically what we see from both the ISP side and the CDN side is there's always a rush till that time of year. Well, somebody, you know, which CDN has the contract, who has the right amount of capacity to, uh, you know, to which ISPs. And there, there's a rush to build. By u- utilizing the open caching technology, you've got the capacity there already. And you can utilize it, right, without having to do some of that, you know, peering and interconnect, um, you know, like jumping around effort. Uh, you you have the capacity there, so you can just assign it directly to the cache. Um, and I, I think that's really, you know, that's really one of the benefits that you that you look at um, when you've got live events and you know comparing it to the traditional CDN methods. Right. Um... And that was actually one of the, the first Q&A questions was the open caching different than CDN. So we already nailed that one. Um, <laughs> we nailed that uh, one. And I think, you know, we're, we're trying to leave it, uh, leave enough uh, for the imagination here so that, uh, you know, folks can get interested. I wanted to mention um, there is a, a website that the, the SBA has. It's uh, opencaching.streamingvideoalliance.org. We have that, uh, that link in our slides, uh, yeah. you know, when they're shared so and folks I'll, can find I'll it. I'll put but... that up at the, the end too. So the the specifications are shared there as well as uh, some use cases and other, um, you know, interesting papers that the organization has put together that, uh, you know, that explain the technology. Cool. Um, so we do have um, a question from Jeff. How will this impact 45 second to one minute delay seen between linear and OTT delivery and live sports? Is there a concerted effort to try and sync up these delivery results between DTH MSO and even DTC services. Uh, yeah, so this one's a little beyond, uh, you know, my uh, my role within the, the video delivery work chain. Uh, although there, I'll, I'll point out there is some other good SVA uh, work that has gone into this question, um, you know. But from the the open cache perspective, right, that optimizes that that end part to the user. Um, it doesn't change, you know, other uh, you know encoding and and uh, transit. Uh, you know, aspects of the video workflow. And what um, is open caching enabling new kinds of applications? If so, how? Uh, you know, and that, that's, I, I think, one of the interesting things that we've been finding and we've been looking for as we, you know, partner with, uh, with content providers. Uh, you know, it, it gives you that ability for that, uh, that high throughput and that low latency. Um, so if you start thinking about, you know, what are potential, you know, applications for, you know, virtual reality, augmented yeah. reality, things that when, when you start to study these things, you know, just the, the throughput that you need is, is uh, you know, so much larger than anything today. Um, yeah. I, I do think it provides a, a benefit to that. Um, I think you know, about that a lot with AR. I think about that a lot with AR, right? Just like the immense amount of content that we're going to be storing and, and needing so quickly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think VR definitely, but I mean, as we kind of see this progress and how accessible things are, I would imagine that AR is just going to be driving it as well. Right. I mean, if you, you look at some of the, you know, there's different methods for doing uh, AR and VR, but, uh, you know, they're all sort of different ways of, uh, you know, sending multiple videos at the yep. same time, right? So you're, you know, yep. just taking one 4K stream. Uh, yeah. you know, is, is one challenge. But then if you're doing multiple, so you have that 360 degrees of view um, and handing off seamlessly between, you know, between them as you change your point of view, uh, you know, in that experience, uh, I, right. I think you really start to notice uh, notice the difference. But it also, I mean, I don't know if we've really mentioned this. I mean, like the thing that's interesting too with open caching is that it isn't just about moving video content right? It's also about files, about different kinds of files that we uh, are making closer and more readily available to the user. 
Right. I mean, uh, streaming is, you know, what, what people will think of first, but um, yeah. there's a lot of other content coming down off the internet, whether it's, you know, your large software updates or, you know, exactly. game files, uh, yep. you know, that are in the tens or, you know, hundred gigabytes. Uh, yeah. You know, th these are all things that can be done more efficiently with, with that type of localized caching within the ISP network. Yeah. Um, uh, is open caching, is this open caching process in use by many providers? Uh, yeah, so there, there are other providers, um, that are, that are all around the world, really. Um, some folks have, uh, have done their own, uh, software, you know, their own implementation, um, and others are using, uh, the software that we have from a vendor called Quilt, who was one of the, uh, you know, one of the early innovators in this technology. Um, but, you know, even something as interesting as there's another, uh, another SVA member, Viasat, uh, you know, that has uh, ported the technology for use on airplanes, right? Yeah. You know, think of, you know, kind of that low, you know, lower bandwidth connection that you have to that, you know, that moving plane. Um, you know, they've done some interesting trials that they've talked about, um, you know, to use open caching to improve that experience. Yeah. Um can you talk a little bit more about how capacity works differently with open caching? Um, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we touched on this a little bit with like the, the live streaming view. Um, but if we, you know, if you think back to the network diagram, you've got that, you've got that server at the edge and uh, the, you have uh when you look at your streaming traffic on your network day by day, it's not the same thing all the time, right? So video is repetitive, but what uh, what's taking your peak capacity isn't always going to be the same. So yeah. with open caching, it allows you to share that capacity, right? You only have to install, uh, you know, one server at your central office. You wouldn't have to, you know, for example, provide, you know, put multiple proprietary vendors uh, into that constrained environment. Um, and then you have that resource that can be shared. Uh, using open caching, uh, you know, so that that creates a benefit at that end. And as I mentioned, right, you don't have to do that uh, jockeying of capacity uh, at the internet edge, you know, with the CDNs uh, and other networks that would normally be flowing that into your network. Great. Um, what is the business model for open caching? How are the costs of the cache hardware amortized? No pricing, of course. <laughs> 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 it's a pretty detailed question into our <laughs> into our business case so i know we, it's not something that you know we talk about everything yeah but, we don't really talk about that but if you uh, are interested the, the efficiency is the main that. thing right i think that's what uh, <laughs> that's what we try to get across for the isp for the cdn um yeah you know by doing this you have that efficiency benefit you don't have to build out your core network as much right. um you know and, and on top of that you're seeing uh, the performance benefits yeah. Oh. Guys, I actually had a question too, if you don't mind. Absolutely, sure. Brad. Um, I wondered, so the, the point of open, obviously you guys have your own ecosystem, especially with Fios running straight to the home. So why even bother with, with something that's open, right? Because it's slower to develop an open standard and you know, it takes all this time to herd the cats, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I think you answered that, but is the key point that you're not having to integrate with all these separate last mile endpoints? Is that the, the win for you yeah. guys? Uh, well, that, you know, that's the, um, that's the great part of it right there. So by using the open standard, uh, you know, for, for the ISP, it makes it easier to integrate uh, with content owners because they only have to do it once, right? So they go in and they, you know, they, they meet the specifications and they're not just creating an ability uh, to work with Verizon, uh, but with other ISPs that are doing this around the world. Um, you know, so we, you know, if you compare that to like, if we just created something proprietary, created our own internal CDN, um, you wouldn't have that benefit. So it, it, it makes it sort of that one-stop shop that the content owner can, can do that integration and then they're, they're taking that out to multiple ISPs. And that, that's really the way content distribution works today, right? Every, uh, every content owner is basically doing something called a multi-CDN strategy. Um, so they're already addressing multiple CDNs to find who has the best path to an ISP or who has available capacity. And it, it's just an extension of that same strategy that they're doing today. So you could have your CDN capacity and then you have your open cache capacity 
um, and they manage it in much the same way. Yeah. Okay. And I guess the the big one is in the. It's not necessarily in the video transport. It's in the APIs and the systemization of this. And if there's a common approach to that, you're not having to do a bunch of B two B bespoke integration. So. Well, thank you guys very much. Excellent presentation. Um, and we really appreciate you being here with us. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Thanks for the time.